Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God for another opportunity to bring a full recap of what we have been talking about on leadership by the Spirit. We started with um, the first series for part one, part two, part three, part four, five, six, seven. And today we have been part eight looking at the same topic, the same message on leadership by the Spirit. I'm going to read a few verses of the scriptures and put some light on what the Holy Spirit is trying to bring our way at this time in the history of our world. There is a great need, the need that is needed in this hour is leadership by the Spirit that begins from, like I said in all the series, that begins from, number one, yourself, your body, your soul, your mind. If we are to be led, we need to be led by the Spirit. Because we have gone through so many years of so many things, we need to realign. We need to come at one with the Father. And the Father that we talk about is the Spirit. Like Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, verse 2, verse 3 declared, In the beginning, God created, God created the heavens and the earth. And we discovered by revelation and by understanding that the God, G-O-D, we're talking about is the Spirit. And the Spirit moved over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. So, for us to have, for us to be able to return for a blessing, for us to have the blessedness of the human family, we need a return to the Spirit. Like I said, starting from us as individuals. Number one, we need to be led. For, say, for as many that are led, in Romans chapter 8, that for as many that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. But the Spirit was moving over the face of the earth. So what am I talking about and what am I trying to bring across our way today? We need to reintegrate. We need to reinculcate. We need to bring back our lives as individuals, our lives as families, our lives as a community, our life as a state, our lives as a nation, our life as a continent, our lives as the whole world in general. We need to realign with the Spirit in every sphere, in every strata, in every area that we find ourselves. God, according to John chapter 4, in verse 24, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the identified, the verified, the vindicated, time-tested Messiah, declared to us by understanding that God is a spirit, and they that will worship God must worship God by the Spirit and by the truth. 
in the spirit and in the truth. For the spirit and for the truth. With the spirit and with the truth. We need to realign with the spirit. There has been so many tears, so many pain that all individuals have gone through. Individuals, families, communities, states, nations, continents as a whole, and the whole world in general have gone through pains, pains, untold pains. A lot of strange situations, strange pains have taken place that have gone out of proportion. Let us go back to he that created us from the beginning. Like he said, in the beginning, God, by the Spirit, created the heaven and the earth. I am trying to show to you that there is a spirit that we all are supposed to have. And what is that spirit? That spirit is the spirit of God, the life of God, the energy of God that is revealed to us as the spirit of compassion, the spirit of goodness, the spirit of mercy. What am I trying to say? In order for us to have success in leadership of our own spirit, of our own soul, of our own body, we need the spirit. We need to realign with the spirit. We need to reintegrate the spirit we need to follow up with the spirit in the spirit is life in the spirit is compassion in the spirit is goodness in the spirit is mercy friends i must tell you i've been trying to talk and a lot of comments and words have come to me that i need to properly realign and readdress what we are trying to say. What are we actually driving at? And what is the purpose? What is the goal beside what we are talking about? In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, from verse 1, Apostle Paul was ministering and he said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I have not charity, I am become a sandy brass or a tinkling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, whether mathematics, whether physics, whether chemistry, Whatsoever kind of knowledge, engineering knowledge, medical knowledge, psychological knowledge, institutional knowledge, any kind of knowledge. Though I, I, I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mysteries and I have all knowledge and though I have all faith, all faith so that I can remove mountains and I have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be born, and I have no charity, it profited me nothing. In verse 4, so charity suffered long, that is compassion, suffered long, and is kind. Charity ever yet not. Charity vaunted not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself or similarly, seeketh not our own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, 
but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, which is compassion. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, I will prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child, I taught as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am, I am known. And now abided faith, hope, charity, that I said compassion, this theory, but the greatest of this theory is charity. The greatest that we need in leadership is charity. You know, no matter what we know, all the mysteries, all the knowledge, all the uh, 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 metaphysical, whatever kind of knowledge that we have, all the knowledge, you know, that we boast of, all the knowledge that we show that we know, whether artificial knowledge, whether physical knowledge, whether spiritual knowledge, what else, everything, all of them we seize. It has a place. But what am I talking about? Whatever knowledge that we have, we need compassion. Our knowledge, our information, our revelation must be based on compassion. And that is why the Bible said in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, How God, which is the Spirit, anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So what am I talking about? Whatever that we are doing as individuals, whatever we are doing as family, whatever we are doing as a community, as a group of persons, we must go along with God. And the God that we go along with is compassion. The Spirit of God is revealed in the form of compassion. In Exodus chapter 34, Exodus 34, because the hour has come for the Father to make himself known to all humanity, regardless of your field, regardless of your knowledge, regardless of your religious knowledge, regardless of your economic knowledge, regardless of your spiritual knowledge, whatsoever knowledge that you have, does it drive towards the help? Does it bring accentuation? Does it bring accomplishment? Does it bring healing to the people? Does it bring deliverance to the people? Does it lift one another out of the dungeon of trouble, out of the dungeon of tribulation, out of the dungeon of pain, out of the dungeon of diseases? Does it bring us closer to the unity of the Spirit in the whole of humanity? Does it describe man as a brother to man? Does it make man to be a brother to man? If it is not there, then we need to go back. According to Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning. Genesis is in the beginning. That is from the original beginning. Where the gene started from. The gene was the gene of compassion. That is why we have so much stress, so much trouble, so much diseases, so much attack on one another, so much killing one another, so much destroying one another. Why? Because we lack the spirit of the beginning. We lack the spirit of the original purpose. We lack the spirit of the original plan. We lack the spirit of the original manual. There is a spirit that created the heaven and the earth. The heaven and the earth were created by the spirit of compassion. God has a purpose why he created the heaven and the earth. The heavens and the earth were not created for us to destroy one another or to destroy ourselves. 
He says, as many that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So it means as many that are led by the Spirit, they are the daughters of God. It means the knowledge that is integrated by the Spirit becomes the knowledge that is useful. In Exodus chapter 34, and, it, and the Lord God from us one and the Lord God said unto Moses, Heal the two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself to me there in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount. Neither let the flocks nor heads feed before the mouth. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up to the Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand the two tables of stone. In verse 5, And the Lord, and the Lord, and the Jehovah, and the Lord, the Spirit, and the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that we by no means clear the guilty, visiting iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. In here, the nature of God by the Spirit was revealed. The nature of God is compassion. The nature of God is goodness. The nature of God is truth. The nature of God is mercy. The nature of God is understanding. The nature of God is blessedness. The nature of God is to bring you up, is to raise you up. And that is why it's in Romans 8 verse 11, it said, And if the Spirit that raised up Christ, raised up the Lord Jesus Christ, raised up Yeshua, the Messiah, raise him up. If the Lord, the Spirit that raised him up, dwell in you, it shall quicken your mortal body. It means that the lacking of humanity is the Spirit. And like I said, the Spirit of compassion, the Spirit of goodness, the Spirit of mercy, the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of fairness, the Spirit of equity, the spirit that would help, the spirit that would uphold, the spirit that would strengthen, the spirit that would establish, the spirit that would settle. You know, all over the whole world today, all in all the continents of the world, in all the countries in the world, in all the states of the world, in all the communities, in all the towns, in all the villages of the world, in all the religions of the world, what is lacking is compassion. What is lacking is mercy. What is lacking is goodness. What is at stake is that they, they, we are not being led by the same spirit that created the heavens and the earth. And we are not being led by the same spirit that is sustaining the heavens and the earth. You know, right now, it is the spirit of God, the spirit of compassion, that is still sustaining the entire earth. It is the same spirit that is sustaining our bodies. What I'm talking about is we need to resonate. We need to respond. We need to have a bio correspondence back to the same spirit. When the rains fall upon the earth, 
the, the, the same rain that fall upon the earth are gathered back again to form another cloud. So what am I talking about? We need the same spirit in us to be able to administer glory of God to our bodies whereby we, where we receive the spirit of God. The spirit of God that we receive is the spirit of Christ. In, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, in verse 17, it says, Now, the Lord is that spirit. The Lord that was revealed as Yeshua the Messiah, as the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that the Lord, the Lord is that spirit. I, can you connect the same thing? The Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 4, verse 24 said, Now God is a spirit. You know, and then Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 said, Now the Lord is that spirit. And we discover that the Lord Jesus Christ, all he was manifesting was compassion. All he was manifesting was healing the sick and stopping the oppression of the oppressed. You know, and if every leader, if every man, if every woman, if every child is tending towards the same thing, the earth will be healed. That will bring me to Malachi chapter 4, so that you understand the anointing of this hour. Every preacher, every leader, every man, every woman, wherever you are on the face of the earth, whether you are an engineer, whether you are a doctor, whether whatever, whatever you are, any in any sphere, in every area, whether economic, where any area, social, economic, whatsoever, whatever you have learned, whatever you are doing, electronics, electricals, whatever it is, we need to reintegrate the spirit of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said he looked at them and he had compassion on them. And he said, how can I leave them to go? They have been with me for this long. If they go away, they are going to faint. And he said, give them something to eat. Every leader, number one, like I said, you are to lead yourself. You know, many are not leading themselves well. You lead yourself to affliction. You lead yourself to sicknesses, to diseases, to pain. There are so much hatred, so much bitterness, so much wickedness in the heart. He said, the wicked shall do wickedly. But they that know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploits. You know, the wicked will do wickedly and their wickedness will register in their own body. Their wickedness will cut them short. Their wickedness will bring about bombing and reaction, you know, bombing one another, killing one another, destroying one another. You know, it happened in the days of the Hiroshima uh, 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 situation. Unknown to them, the, the, the people in Hiroshima were only anticipating, they were expecting B-29 bomber to bomb their area. Not knowing that another bomb has been developed that will be much more wicked and much more terrible they were anticipating b29 but they got an atomic bomb that finished everybody you know we need to be very careful with uh, our wickedness will lead us nowhere our wickedness will only bring our destruction yeah we if we think that we are smart in our wickedness there is another higher wicked person that will be arranged against us Look at the situation that happened in Hiroshima. Hiroshima, they were doing their own thing. They were carrying out their own bombing, not knowing that America will have something that is stronger, something that is more terrible, something that is more frightening to shock them. That is what every man is doing. I speak to your heart. You may be doing your wickedness right now. For your information, your son may be more wicked than you. Your husband may be more wicked than you. Your wife may be more wicked than you. Your father may be more wicked than you. Your leader may become more wicked than you. If you sow the seed of wickedness, you are going to reap the harvest of wickedness. 
Let us submit to the spirit of compassion. Let's submit to the spirit that created the heavens and the earth. Let's submit to the spirit of life. Let's submit to the spirit of Jesus Christ. Let's submit to the spirit of the Messiah. Let us submit as quick as possible. Wherever you are, whether you are in Asia, whether you are in Europe, whether you are in Africa, whether you are in South America, whether you are in North America, wherever you are in Australia, any part of the world, any part of the continent where you are, you need the spirit of compassion like i said number one in yourself number two in your family number three in your community number four in your state number five in your country number six in your continent we need without the spirit of of compassion we are heading for a terrible cliff we are heading for a terrible fall and i want to tell you there is no wickedness that is an island no matter how fearful you are, no matter how wicked you are, there's another wicked person that's going to bring you down. But compassion never fails. Compassion will live forever. If the works of compassion will continue forever, forever and ever and ever. Whatever, look at the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus came, he was not harming people, he was not hurting people, he was healing the sick, he was delivering the oppressed, he was feeding the poor, he was doing everything that was needed for the earth to do. And in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, he said, Come unto me, all you leaders that have heaven, that have labored and are having laden, all you economic leaders, all you uh, uh, engineering leaders, all you political leaders, whatsoever you are, come unto me, family leaders, come unto me, individual leaders, come unto me, all you that labor and are having laden, and I will give you rest. What is the rest? Compassion. What is the rest? Goodness. What is the rest? Mercy. I will give you rest. Take my yoke. My yoke is compassion. My yoke is goodness. My yoke is mercy. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. This is the way. Say, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man can come unto the Father. When he say no man can come unto the Father, it means that no man can become like the Father except by me. No man can achieve oneness with the Almighty God except through the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Except through the practice of the original life, through the practice of the original spirit, through the practice of the original fountain. He said he is the fountain of life in your light. In your life we see light and let it is the light that leads the way. Say for you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the sword of the earth. If you receive compassion, if you receive goodness by the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you become the light of the world. You become the light of the world. You become the salt of the earth. You become the life of the earth. You become the deliverer power of the earth. You become the example of the earth. You become the substance. You become the substantial substance that will help the earth. He said, if there are knowledge, it will cease. If there are anything, prophecies, whatever it is, it will cease. But there is one thing that will not cease. The good that you do for me and the good that I do for you. The compassion that you have in your heart. So many of us are having acidic atmosphere, acidic situation. Every wicked spirit is an acid. It's a corrosive acid, a destructive acid that destroys, that pull down that have no mercy. And the, the, the fact of the matter is this. Every wicked spirit bounces back on the wicked producer. Every wicked man from, from you, you will receive again that very thing that you spew out. He said, he said as the, he giveth seed to the sower and bread to the eater, as the rain cometh down and water the earth, so also my word is, that cometh down, it will give bread to the eat, seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. The, what does it mean? It means that whatsoever you do, there is a, re, a resonance. There is a returning frequency. There is a response. There is a definite response back to you. 
That means whatever you are doing with your hand, with your feet, with your eyes, with your mind, with your soul, with your spirit, what you are doing returns back to you. If you are investing in goodness, you will receive goodness. If you are investing in compassion, you will receive compassion. If you are investing in mercy, you will receive mercy. The fact is this. These things does not happen over a day. Thomas ever had this thing. Went into searching for fil the filament that produced light over and over again. Like we are told, over a thousand times. He was able, out of accumulation of steps and way out, until he was able to find a way. And today we are all enjoying the light, the filament of the light bulb that is shining all over the world and everywhere, every part, every nook and cranny, all continents, all countries, all states, all people, everywhere are enjoying the light today. It's just like that. If he could discover that after taking so many steps, so many steps, he took these steps to discover we need to discover compassion. We need to discover the, the, the language of goodness. We need to discover the language of compassion. We need to discover the language of mercy. Let me tell us very clear. Compassion is like a continent. It's like a galaxy. It's like a universe. That when you enter, you keep on entering until the, 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 the beauty and the glory of compassion will be revealed in you. Just like a ghost meat, when it's beating the gold, until it sees its reflection on that gold, that is when it knows that it has gotten the purified gold out of the earth. So when you indulge in compassion, until it is now reflected wholly, completely in you, that is when you now understand the content. That is when you understand the degree of compassion. That is when you understand the beauty. Because number one, it will elongate your life. It will elongate your spirit. It will elongate your understanding. It will give you wisdom. It will give you understanding. It will give you blessedness. It will bless your spirit. It will bless your soul. It will bless your body. It will bless your generation that are unborn. Let us sow the right kind of seed, the seed of compassion. The whole earth is almost burnt up with wickedness and affliction, diseases and trouble, tribulations and pain, nagging and confusion, terrorism and wickedism. Everywhere, let us go back and re -sow. You know, he said the stone that the builder has rejected has become the head of the corner. This stone that the builders rejected, the Lord Jesus Christ was manifested, Yeshua was manifested as compassion. It was the embodiment of compassion. It was the express image, express declaration of compassion. It was the full image of compassion. It was rejected. You know, it was rejected and it was crucified. At the end of the day, we don't have such kind of level of compassion on the earth. Let us return back because that is the way. We, we continue to destroy one another. We continue to bomb one another without listening to the word of compassion. It is the way, it is the truth, it is the life. No man can come to the Father, no man can become like the Father, no man can find the spirit of life, no man can find eternity, no man can find longevity without the spirit of compassion. The compassion is the way, compassion is the truth, compassion is the life, compassion is the glory, compassion is the power, compassion is the riches, compassion is the wisdom. Compassion is our strength. Compassion is our honor. Compassion is our glory. Compassion is our blessing. Let us return as individuals return. In your house, return into the spirit of compassion. In your family, return. On the street, return. In your community, return. You know, we get, we get this in. We hence release to further wickedness. 
And wickedness plus wickedness plus wickedness will bring further wickedness and destructive wickedness. Like I gave us an example. When, 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 when nations take harm against nations, thinking that they have enough harm, another nation will come with bigger, better harm against that nation, that thing that they have. Look at what ISIS was doing, killing people on the street, thinking that they have the control of how many people can they create? How many people can they make? How many healing have they done? How many have they set free from affliction? You are killing a human being. Do you know what it takes to make one? Do you know what it takes to create one? Do you know what it takes to sustain one? Let us return by the spirit of compassion as quick as possible. God help us. This is a clarion call. This is a call of the angel of the Lord. This is a call of the spirit of God. You know, just like science was trying to deny God, they can't deny God right now. Because in the beginning, God created. And God, by the Spirit, created. You cannot deny God because if you deny God, you'll find yourself foolish at the end. He said, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The fool has said in his heart, compassion does not work. But I tell you, and I declare to you, that compassion is the way out of the crisis that all nations have immersed themselves into. All leaders have immersed themselves into all the, 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 the drum of wickedness we need to realign we need to realign starting from you as an individual starting from you as a family starting from you as a group starting from you as a community starting from you as a state starting from you as a country just the way it happened to jonah the whole Nineveh, just like what we saw in the vision, nations are going to submit to compassion. Nations are going to submit to goodness. Nations are going to submit to the mercy of God. There is no other further way. Nations will submit finally. And the earlier we start, the better. If you start now, you become a, the maker of way. You become the pioneer of compassion. You become the pioneer of goodness. You become the pioneer of mercy. Let us hear the seed for you, friends. Here is seed for you. Joseph gave seed. And I'm giving you the seed today. The seed of life. You know, I was telling you know us during the last broadcast that what is an idea? You know, everybody is going up and down all the educational institutions. We're talking about ideas, 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 ideas. But what is actually an idea? To make an idea, a real, a real idea, idea number one must have information. Number two, idea must have determination number three idea must have an experimented experimentation number four idea must have accentuation idea must lift us up idea must bring us up idea must give us a better life idea must not be killing said in john chapter 10 verse 10 said the thief the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It means that if your idea is a stealing idea, no good. If your idea is a killing idea, not good. If your idea is a destroying idea, no good. It is rejected with all vehemence from the presence of the Lord. Let your idea produce life. Let your idea produce strength. Let your idea produce raising up, not captivity. If your idea is leading people to captivity, no good. If your idea is bringing us to liberty, to have genuine life, then your idea is worthwhile. In Malachi chapter 4, it says, For behold, the day cometh which has come, the day cometh that shall born as an ovum, Yes, and all the proud, yes, and all that do wickedly, yes, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up. See the Lord of hosts, that he shall leave them neither root nor branch. It means their memory will be wiped out. The memory of wickedness will be wiped out. The memory of evil will be wiped out. The memory of, of, of pride will be wiped out. The memory of those that are wasting the earth will be wiped out. See? And. Okay. He said, shall burn them up, saith the Lord 
of hosts. And that he shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness. Shall the spirit of righteousness. The son, the spirit, the light ray, the frequency, the energy of the spirit shall rise with healing in his wings. And you shall go forth. Every one of you that received this word, you shall go forth. I say you will go forth. You will go forth and grow up. You will be established. You will be strengthened. You will be settled. He said you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the store. That is Malachi chapter 4 verse 2. And if I still said, and you shall tread down the wicked. You, you that is empowered, you that is established, you that is strengthened, you shall make the wicked nothing. Why? Because the wicked will look at you and become ashamed. The wicked will see the results of compassion and they will become ashamed of their evil. The wicked will see the glory of compassion and they will become ashamed of their evil. The wicked will see the glory of goodness and they will become ashamed of their evil. The wicked will see the glory of mercy and they will become ashamed of their evil. For there shall be ashes under the sole of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Oreb for all Israel. All the Ten Commandments were commandments of honor. Four to honor the Father, one to honor yourself, the other five to honor your neighbor. It's a commandment of honor. Honor the Father, honor the Spirit, honor the Spirit, reverence the Spirit. Give the Spirit, Almighty God, His place in your life and honor yourself. Have rest, refresh yourself for a day and Honor your brother by what? By not killing, by not stealing, by not bearing false witness against anybody. You are honoring them. If you bear a false witness against your brother, you dishonor them. If you steal their property, you dishonor your, the, them because you have stolen what belongs to them. And that is what we are talking about, that we need to reintegrate the spirit of God. The spirit of compassion into our leadership in all sphere. Like I said, number one, you that is hearing this word now, you need to be led by the spirit of compassion. As you are reading, as you are studying, apply the spirit of compassion. As you are acting, as you are walking, as you are reacting, apply the spirit of compassion. Apply the spirit of the Almighty God that is revealed through the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Compassion is a Savior. It will save you. It will save you from reacting into foolishness. It will save you from destructive tendencies. It will save your environment. It will save the brother man. It will deliver. Mind you, in 1 Kings chapter 19, you know, God met Elijah the prophet. And the Bible said, and God passed by Elijah, and the first thing that happened was earthquake. After the earthquake was wind. After the wind was fire. After the fire, the voice of God came to Elijah. And the Bible said, the Lord was not in the earthquake. The Lord was not in the winds. The Lord was not in the fires. The Lord was in this voice word. This word is the content of the Lord. We have gone through the earthquake leaderships all over the world. We have had leadership earthquake overthrow this, that, all kind of issues have taken place around the world. We, you, you yourself have had it in your body, you know, when you make some decisions that brought your body into an earthquake condition. You have had the, all kind of wind where you went by the wind and you went out of your way and finally you discovered that you were on the wrong path. You have had a fire situation around you where all kind of anger, you know, the Bible says be angry, but see, don't allow the sun to go down on your wrath. 
So we have had all kind of fire, burning fire, attacking fire, wicked fire all over the place. And it led to nothing but the voice of the Lord, the voice of compassion. In there is where the Lord stays. In there is where the Spirit is. In there is where he appears. He told Moses, I will appear in the ark. Everything that was in the ark was the Ten Commandments. There was nothing else. The anointing was upon the commandment. The anointing was upon the spirit. Just like as I'm speaking right now, we have, we've had the ark of Noah. We had the ark of Moses. We had the ark that was the ark of God in the temple. And today we have the final ark. The final ark is the ark of the spirit where compassion, goodness, and mercy are dwelling together like the lord said i and my father will come and make an abode with you what does it mean it means that finally a genuine leader finally a saved man a saved woman will become the habitation of compassion which is representing the father of goodness which is representing the son of mercy which is representing the Holy Spirit. All of this in you is the fullness of the Godhead that will dwell in us. That is where the families will be delivered. That is where your own body will be delivered. That is where you will be able to deliver your family. That is where when all leaders, where all men get this word and understand these things, then they will be able to lead well. Then there will be the troubles and the ills of the societies will be erased. When we understand that the compassion of God needs to rule ahead of the rulers, when we understand that the goodness of God needs to rule ahead of the leaders, when we understand that the mercy of God needs to go ahead of us all, then we'll be able to arrive at the junction of the glory of the Lord. Friends, the hour has come. Let us begin to heal ourselves. Let compassion dwell in your body richly. Compassion is for you to have sympathetic sympathy. Heart throbbing bowels of compassion where you are not judging based on what you know. Where you are not reacting based on what you know. You are only committing all things to the Almighty God, just like the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. And He said, My Father, if it, were, if it is possible, let this cup pass over me, but not my will, but your will be done. So it means that we are now submitted under the will of the Almighty God, the will that created the earth. Then we will not discover ourselves. The earth will discover the reason why the earth is here. The people will discover the reason why they are here. What is the purpose of creation of, 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 of billions and billions of people? Are we supposed to be throwing sword, throwing dagger, throwing bullets? Or are we supposed to be cutting one another down? Are we supposed to be frustrating one another? Is that the essence of the creation? No. The essence is for beauty. The essence is for glory. The essence is for joy. And when we discover all this, then the joy will return to the earth because the end of compassion, goodness, and mercy is joy. If you keep them, your body will resonate into the frequency of hurt, into the frequency of wet, into the frequency of glory. And every other frequency of disease will disappear. But men that refuse to learn, they will find the same thing standing before them in the very time that is ahead. Let us follow with one another. Let us understand the concept of this glory and let the glory of this purpose be established in us. So I summarize in this edition, leadership by the Spirit is leadership by compassion, leadership by goodness, leadership by mercy. And the measure, the standard is revealed by Jesus Christ 
Yeshua, the mighty, mighty Messiah, as he is known all over the world, as, as he is known in Israel, as he is known in North America, as he is known in Australia, as he is known in all parts of the world. And what am I trying to talk about? I'm trying to tell us that the time has come for us to put aside all our madness, all our foolishness, all our wickedness. The time has come to put them aside. Like I said, Japan thought they had enough until they saw atomic bomb and they surrendered. Anything you are doing right now, somebody has something ahead of you. Somebody have a bigger gun. Somebody have a bigger option. Somebody have a bigger way to deal with your situation. Because whatsoever a man soweth, according to Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 9, he shall reap. So enough of sowing wickedness, enough of sowing tears, enough of sowing pain, enough of sowing affliction. Let us begin to sow compassion. Let us sow goodness. Let us sow mercy. Let us respond with everything that is in our heart. Let the goodness of God germinate out of us. Let the beauty of the glory of God be revealed in us. In Isaiah chapter 11, in verse 2, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And the spirit of the Lord, which is the spirit of compassion, shall rest upon him. The spirit of compassion shall rest upon him and in compassion, compassion have seven spirits. In compassion you have goodness, in compassion you have knowledge, in compassion you have mind, in compassion you have understanding, in compassion you have reverence and fear of the Lord. And the spirit shall rest upon him. With You know, he said the knowledge of the Lord shall cover the earth as the water cover the sea. The, the Lord gave the word, great is the company of they that will publish it. Wherever you are, as you take this word, the blessedness of God will come upon your soul. If you are sick in your body, I speak to your sickness right now, be healed, in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, if you are afflicted in your heart, if you are afflicted in your mind, if you are afflicted in your body, be healed. If you are bound by, by, by unclean spirits that are revealed by wicked tendencies, be healed by the fire of his appearing. We hear this blessed appearing. We are looking forward to the mighty, mighty manifestation of the sons of God. So the endless expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation. And the manifestation of the sons of God is the manifestation of compassion, the manifestation of goodness, the manifestation of mercy for one another, for all, to all, by all, in all, through all, that all may become all, that God, compassion will dwell in all. He said there was a stone that was caught with that hand, and that's stone struck every wickedness that stone is the stone of compassion it's coming your way it's coming over the nations it's coming to the nation where you are this stone will prevail just the way the stone of David prevailed over Goliath, every wicked man, every wicked thing ahead of you, this stone of compassion will bring them down. The glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together. God bless you in this edition. We'll be coming your way again by the grace of God by next week and we will see how the glory of the Lord will emanate and how the blessings of God will continue to bless you. Don't forget, if you want to reach us, you can reach us on uh, our, our number is 612-249-3861. We will be willing to take questions and answer, give you answers so that we all can quickly start together to quickly rebuild ourselves, to bring down all the wars, to bring down all the, all the stronghold, to bring down the, 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 all the bamboo, all the purple, all the, all the white and the black curtains and all the things, all the, all the, all the wars of partition and the wars of suppression that have caused a lot of, of frustration of one spirit. Make God is gathering all together. According to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10, he said, and, the, uh, uh, and God, uh, in the, uh, the fullness of the dispensation of time, God will gather all together 
by Christ Jesus, by Yeshua the Messiah. So shall it be all, all by one spirit, just like God by one blood created all men. We all have one blood, whether white, whether black, whether uh, anything, whatever you are, one blood that we, God has given to us. And by one spirit, we are being gathered back. And the spirit of compassion, the spirit of goodness, the spirit of mercy is strong enough to gather us together. And like the Bible said in the, in the book of Songs of Solomon, compassion is as strong as death. God bless you. God fill you with the spirit. According to the book of Joel, chapter 2, he said, And in the last days, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. What spirit? Spirit of compassion. What spirit? The spirit of goodness. What spirit? Mercy. So if you receive any spirit and you don't have compassion, you don't have goodness, you don't have mercy, you need to receive the right spirit. What am I trying to say? Whatever you are doing should bring what? Number one, accentuation to yourself. Number two, elimination of evil from yourself. You accentuate goodness, accentuate compassion, accentuate mercy in yourself. Eliminate evil, eliminate wickedness in yourself. And whatever you do to yourself, you'll be able to do to your family, you'll be able to do to the group of people, to the community, you'll be able to do to the state, you'll be able to do to the nation, you'll be able to do to the country, you'll be able to do to the continent, and then the joy of the Lord will become our strength. We'll come your way again sometime by the grace of God, and we'll continue in this series. The Holy Spirit have told us to continue to talk about leadership. Why? That is the missing link. Every man is leading himself astray. You lead yourself to foolishness. You lead yourself to wickedness. You lead yourself to pain, to affliction. You know, and as, as it is written in the book of Revelation chapter 21, in verse 4, it said, And there shall be no more sorrow, no more pain, no more uh, 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 wickedness, for the former things have passed away. You know, and the mandate that we have received is to wipe out affliction, is to make an end of pain, to make an end of sorrow. And the only way we can make an end of pain and sorrow is to reintegrate the spirit of compassion, the spirit of goodness, the spirit of mercy. God bless you. See you again sometime. Continue to, 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 to listen to these editions. Continue as the spirit of God will continue to help us to come your way. We'll continue to, to talk and God will pour, continue to pour His Spirit. And wherever you are listening, receive the outpouring of the Spirit of compassion. Receive the outpouring of the Spirit of goodness. Receive the outpouring of the Spirit of mercy. Every evil in your life be terminated by fire. Every wickedness in your life be terminated by fire. Every covenant of death in your life be broken by fire. Covenant of affliction be broken by fire. Covenant of wickedness be broken by fire. Everyone planning evil against your life and destiny let that thing be dismantled and destroyed by fire. In Revelation 11 verse 18, it said, Time came that God will reward the people with compassion and will destroy them that destroy the earth. Let me tell you, it is time to put on compassion. Compassion. So when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Today, the angel is saying, when I see compassion, when I see goodness, when I see mercy in your body, mercy in your house, mercy in your country, mercy in your state, I will pass over you. That is the clear on call. Don't say you did not hear. This message is from his presence. May the glory of the Lord bless you in this nation, in, 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 in America, in Minnesota, in Minneapolis, wherever you are. May the blessings of the Lord find you. May, your, may, you, may, may, may the healing proceed from the presence of the Lord like a great fountain. May you be healed. May you be delivered. May you receive the grace of God. God richly bless you, strengthen you, fill you with grace. Until I talk to you again.